we will learn how to recreate the Cybertron's clear track drum pattern in Max MSP. Let's take a listen. But first, we're going to learn how to even create a more of an advanced sequencer in Max MSP. So far, we've had this basic sequencer. But it's not that classic sequencer with some 16 or 32 steps that we can choose in a grid or in a matrix where each note is placed. So today we're going to learn how to create a grid-based sequencer in Max. First, I'm going to demonstrate this by just dropping in the bass drum, snare drum, and my two hi-hats as a form of a playlist object. You want to make sure that these files, these audio files, are in the same folder as your max patch is. Otherwise, later if you open your max patch, you won't be able to play back these audio files if they're not in the same location, if they're not in the same folder. I'm going to start first with the samples, but after we get to how to create a grid-based sequencer, you can replace these samples with another synthesizer that you've created in Max. For example, we looked at how to create bass drum using a cycle oscillator. So you can replace this playlist object with that whole system, with the contents of that other patch that we created together. Okay, so first we're going to start with our metro. And next, of course, in any sequencer, we want a counter object. Now the numbers that we put in counter are essentially indicating how many steps our sequencer has. If you look at the Rob Ricketts poster of the 808 beat pattern for this song, uh, we can see that each of those steps, each of those grids, are representing a 16th note. So I want to create a sequencer that has 16 note grid as well. Now there are 16, 16 notes in one measure. So for now I'm going to stick to just one measure, even though we see two measures for the complete loop. But right now I want to just create one measure, so that means I have 16 steps. So I want one, my counter to go from the first step to the 16th step. And now we need a massive select object that selects 1 through 16. Now, I also know that I need to send a message of 1 to each of these playlists in order to activate them. So now I know that every 150 milliseconds, this metro is going to send a bang and counter is going to go through 1 through 16. And from 1 through 16, each of these inputs will send out a bang. Now, I don't want my bass drum to be played on every single 16th note. As you can see in the grid notation for this first measure, bass drum is not playing every 16th note. So somehow, I need to ignore some of these outputs and only accept the ones that I want. So this is when the object gate comes into place. If you open the gate help, you can see that a zero turns the outlet off and the one opens the first outlet, two opens the second outlet, and we only need one outlet so to let either the bang go through or the bang to not go through. And an object to send zeros and ones very easily is the toggle. So I'm going to attach a toggle to a gate object and when it's off, the bank can't go through, and when it's on, the bank can go through. When this toggle is turned off, you can see that says gate output number one, currently closed. Anything in the right input won't come out of this output. However, if I lock my patch and turn this toggle on, now if I hover over the gate's output, it says that currently open. So whatever I send into this input, it's going to come out of that output. So essentially, I want to create 16 of these gates as my 16 steps of the sequencer. And a fast way to do that is to use the option key. And when maybe you get to the 8th one, do a duplication. Now we need to send the outputs of select to each of these gate objects. This is a labor-intensive patching process. You know, we could make this select object longer. And don't forget that we need to send all these gate outputs to the number one. Create an easy DAC object so we can hear the outputs. 
Okay, so technically if I activate my metro, I shouldn't be able to hear any bass drums because all of the gates are off, meaning none of these bangs that are coming out of the select object should go through. So let's double check that. Correct, nothing is happening. Now let's turn on some of these gates. That means when counter hits number one, it will actually send out a bang. When the counter goes to two, nothing's gonna go through. Three, nothing's gonna go through. When it gets to number four, it's gonna send out a bang. So this is the way that we can sequence rhythms in. So each of these toggles is technically your grid of a 16th note. going to go ahead and create the same system for all the other sounds that we have which is clap snare drum open hi-hat and close hi-hat we don't need to create a new counter but we need to create new select objects and gates all right so for the kick drum we can see on the clear sequence that the kick drum is on the first fourth seventh and the eleventh step so that's what i want to do first fourth 7th and 11th and the snare is on beat 2 and 4 which is the 5th and the 13th step and close hat is on 1 2 3 4 and 9 10 11 12 open hat is on the 5th and the 13th so the same as the snare and I need to make sure that my counter is connected to all of the select objects. Alright, great. Now I can turn on my metronome and hear what it sounds like. You can include the synth patch in this one as well and have those play at the same time. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to make even an easier sequencing grid here with the use of live.grid. So we have this object called live.grid and this is really similar to what you will usually see when you're trying to sequence in any kind of drum machine or digital sequencer. But we need to make some modifications to make it work. So again with this patch that we're going to make right now or the previous ones I encourage you to replace the playlist object with that bass drum synthesis patch that we made together or if you went ahead and made your own hi-hat and snare drum go ahead and try it with those instead of dropping in the samples. But for the sake of keeping this patch as simple as possible, I'm just going to use the playlist object. I'm going to have these kind of on the side, but let's look at how we can modify the look of this live.grid object. So essentially what a normal sequencer will look like is that each of these columns will represent the number of the steps that you have and then each of the rows will represent each of the notes that you're trying to play or in this case each of the drum hits. I want to use this five sound so that means I want a grid that has five rows and as far as my steps go since we're looking at the pattern of the clear we have two bars, each bar has 16 16th notes, so that gives us a total of 32 16th notes. So I want 32 columns and 5 rows. The way that you can change the appearance or the functionalities of some of these objects is by going to their inspector. And the way that you can access an object's inspector is by right clicking on it and clicking on inspector or by just clicking on the object and then clicking on this eye for inspe inspector to the right and that will open up a window looking like this you have your basic layout and all the functionality so I'm just going to go to all and I'm going to scroll all the way down here to where it says value and under value we have number of columns and number of rows so again I want 32 columns so you can just double click and edit the value and you can see that it will reflect the shape of it, the graphic will reflect what you put down in there and then number of rows, I only want five. Of course, you can just resize this however you want. We see some weird colorations here, so we want to fix that as well. One of the things you want to uncheck is that display directions panel, so we can get rid of those arrows that were in the bottom. 
you want this grid to be a little bit more visible to you, you can increase the grid spacing here so they're a little bit more spaced out. And then you want to change the row marker to zero. And one last important thing is to make sure you check the matrix mode. So it got rid of those filled out squares. So this should be good right now. And you can check that by locking your patch and see if you can click on each of these uh, rectangles and see if when you click on them again, they will go away. All right, so let's make this a little bit bigger and look nicer. That's cool. I left the column marker to be on four because I think that has a nice visual to it. Essentially, all these darker grade uh, grids is representing the beats, so the quarter notes and not the 16 notes. And I can go ahead and comment on the number of the of the grids so it makes it a little bit easier to look at it. Remember that the 17th step is the beginning of the second measure. Alright, so I can also go ahead and based on typical sequencing layouts, name the rows based on the drums that I have. So I know my, my bottom row is going to be my bass drum, and then I will have snare drum, and then clap, I will have closed hat next, and at the top I will have my open hi-hat row. Cool, but what do I send to this matrix? Well, it is pretty easy. We can just use a counter object, and since we have 32 steps, I can go from 1 to 32, and of course, let's have a metronome, and we're going to send the output of that counter into the input of our live grid object. Now, let's see what the first output here is. It says current step value. Perfect. If, if I feed it to the right input of a message box, let's see what we'll get. It's zero because we haven't actually input in anything. But if I randomly put in something, now it gives you the row number and it goes from bottom up. The bottom row is going to be one. If there's nothing, it's going to give you zero. If it's the open hi hat, it's going to give you five. And that rate highlighted grid is the current step that it's on. So what if I just send this output to a select object and my select object can say one for bass drum, two for snare. You get it. It goes through five. And let's see if it works. So I'm going to try it with the first input. Perfect. Yeah, this looks like it could work. But here's the thing. This could work when there's only one of these notes in each of our steps. Because look what happens. If I put back our message box here, and what if I have an open hat and a bass drum on the first row? What will happen then? Well, I get a list. Look. I'm going to fill in. We're going to get a list. And we can't just fit the select object a list of things because select only is looking for one message. So we need something that can break down this list. That's where the iter object comes into play. So let's take a look at iter's help. All that iter does is that it breaks a list into individual messages. You can see here that if I I have this list of these numbers going through iter object and then it prints and when I click on that they all break down into individual messages. So that's what I want after my live grid objects because if I send it a list it's only going to accept one of those numbers. It's going to ignore all the numbers after the first number. We're going to be playing our kick drum the same on the same step that we're playing a closed hi-hat and our snare and our clap will always be playing together. So we definitely need this iter object. So let's just do an iter and then we're gonna have that select. And make sure you send the correct output to the correct sound that you want. So number one is your bass drum. Send it to that. Of course we need a message of one for all of this. Three is our clap, four is closed hi-hat, five is open hi-hat. Let's just make an easy DAC object. Oh, 
Ocar patch, turn off our metronome. Let's actually try to sequence in the correct rhythm. Just look at the poster that we have, the steps, and try to sequence in the correct beats. You can count the steps from 1 to 32 if that's easier for you, or if you're familiar with counting music, you can do it that way. So I know I have a kick drum on the first beat of my second measure, and the end of my second beat, then I have three steps in the middle, and then one more, and I know that I have my snare drum on beats 2 and 4, same with my clap on both of these measures, so that one is easy. And I just remember the pattern for open and closed hat. It's a visually fun one to look at. I'm excited to hear the results. Let's see. Cool, so yeah, as a practice, go ahead and replace each of these sounds with a sound that you made from scratch from an oscillator and then maybe also copy paste your synth rise patch all into the same patch have a main patch that you have different sections for different instruments and really explore the possibilities that you can design sound and create sounds in max msp all right hope you enjoyed